In the wise words of Squidward Tentacles, Everybody's a critic. But ironically, it seems that many people can't take criticism, especially people on the internet. I don't want to make the same mistake, so let's make a deal. This video is a critique on criticism online. It's very meta, I know, I'm very smart. So I'm just gonna keep talking, but uh, feel free at any moment to say that you didn't like something. Like, how's the lighting? Uh, is this intro too wordy? Am I not funny? I'm probably not. You tell me! So feel free to talk about that down below, and also timestamp. I will be looking through them and trying to improve as I do. But as for the rest of you, so what is the deal with receiving criticism on and offline? How do we get better at it? And why does it hurt our feelings? Well, you get to typing and I'm just going to keep talking and talking and hopefully the editor me is going to see that I don't know how to really end this part and he's going to cut me off in the middle of my sentence so we can get to the next part. Now, for those of you who don't know, over the course of the past two years, I've lost over 50 pounds. And of course, I know what you're thinking. What? Oh my gosh, you're an inspiration, an icon. Literally, no one else has ever done anything like this before in the history of the world. Oh my gosh, we love you. We think you're amazing. We want to give you endless praise and love. Yes, of course. Thank you. And there will be plenty of time for that at a later date. But I bring that up to say this. I've learned a thing or two about weight loss. Specifically, I learned a lot about going to the gym and eating foods that help you to gain muscle and lose weight. What is the cross section between those two things? The protein bar. What's that you say? This has nothing to do with the title and premise of the video. Well, you're wrong. Just, you gotta be patient. Hold on. I said all of that to get to this. Th this guy. His name is Jake, and he sells a protein bar on TikTok. Particularly, it is a $5 protein bar on TikTok. That's a lot of money. And because of that, it's garnered a lot of reviews. Particularly, one from this guy, former Fat Guy Fitness. If you're not sure what he does online, I think you just need to reread his name. Ah. Now, his whole thing is that he does, like, low-calorie desserts and reviews, things like this. And as such, we trust his opinion. And he was being honest when he said, there's no way this bar should cost $5. However, like I said, unless you have an allergy, there's no reason to be paying five bucks a bar for a protein bar, my friend. It's all the way around. I can't recommend it. So Jake takes it upon himself to respond to that video, basically saying that this bar is the best bar and that everybody else who doesn't like it can go eat the garbage junk food that everybody else seems to like because this is the best bar, AKA he made the wrong decision. The right decision would have been to say, thank you. And that's it. Now, because he made that response video, everybody in the fitness community came together to flame this man. I'm not saying he deserved that much backlash. I'm not really speaking on the actual event itself. I bring all of that just to make the point that people don't like people who can't take criticism. To be clear, they weren't making response videos because the bar was $5. They were making it because Jake couldn't take criticism. In this case, I'm not speaking about him as a person, just in this instance, his ego was his demise. Not even the actual thing that was actually being criticized. I mean, I'd still try it. I'm, I'm interested. The packaging looks cool, but $5? Really, Jake? Come on, can we, can we get a sale? I don't know. People don't like people who can't take advice because it comes off as pompous and just generally annoying. Like to see someone who is clearly making a mistake or is not doing as great as they could be and you're trying to help them, but because they're so close to the situation they can't see it, that's just frustrating. You don't like doing it. In fact, for some people, it's very nerve wracking to give advice because you don't know how the other person's gonna take it. They could get offended and you were just trying to help. So people just aren't going to do it. Case in point, here's something to know about me. Um, If we ever, meet in person or talk online and you tell me, hey, uh, I have a piece of art that I made. I want to show you whether any form of visual art, drawing, sketching, sculpture, whatever may it be, I am begging you, please let it be good. Because I hate with all my heart when somebody wants to show me their art and it's not great. And I just got to sit there and go, wow, that's it. You yeah, wow. Ah. Because you're either just going to make me a liar or a bad person. Don't put that on me. I don't want to do that. Just be self-aware. If you know you're just fishing for compliments, that's fine. But I need you to understand that's what you're doing. So I am going to sound fake. Don't call me out on it. Just understand that this is a very uncomfortable situation. You put the both of us into it and you need to get us out. Because as people, we're caught up in our own worlds and we're often very delusional to how unique or impressive or one of a kind we think we are when in reality we're probably not and please don't make it my responsibility to break that fantasy i don't want to do that we were having fun man put the portfolio down so when it comes to receiving critiques whether it was asked for or otherwise you need to learn how to take it in stride bite the bullet and just deal with it even when you know that critique is uneducated nitpicky presumptuous and dare i say cantankerous you put on the fakest smile you ever have and thank them now, why would you ever want to do that? Consider the following scenario. Boom, POV. I go to your house, you say, hey, I got fries. I say, ooh, what kind? You say, 
loaded strawberries and cream oatmeal fries. I smack you. I never speak to you again. I violate your home. Burn it down. See your children? Trip them. I see your mother. I know she's elderly. I smack her too. Your father? I just make jokes on him. He has a double chin and I laugh about it. Now, was that reaction warranted? I'm sure we can all agree that it was. But should neighbors and local law enforcement find out what you did to that man's family and home, whose side are they going to be on? They're not going to ask you about the culinary atrocity that that man put you through. All they're going to see is a burned down house, and all of a sudden, just because you committed a little bit of arson, you're the bad guy? I mean, it's a messed up world we live in, but it, we do live here, so you got to deal with it. Now, did I use that completely convoluted and very complicated example just to show you my favorite video on TikTok at the moment? Perhaps. But also to emphasize that people are not going to care about what led up to the negative reaction. The negative reaction is all people will remember. Maybe the criticism they gave was completely unfair, biased, and downright stupid. You tell them that, and you're the bad guy. Because they're gonna walk away thinking that you think you're better than everybody else, and everyone else doesn't know what you're talking about, and you're the only one qualified, and yada yada yada. Hey, here's the thing. All of that might be true. Don't tell them that. You might be the best at your craft, but sometimes even kings have to put on a smile for the common folk. So shake that hand, thank them for the advice, and move on. I am not saying it's right. I am not saying it's easy. I'm just saying this is what it is. You have to know and accept that anytime you put yourself or your work out publicly, you are going to find people's opinions, good and bad. Can't change that, it's just, it is what it is. Because again, it's like Squidward said, I really hope I find the clip of him saying The reason it's hard to give criticism in the first place is that one, I have to look at you while I do it, and two, I care about you at least to a basic degree as a human, and I don't want to hurt your feelings if I really don't have to. Two factors that you cannot depend on on the World Wide Web, which, fun fact, that's what the WWW stands for. Did you know that? The shield of anonymity is a powerful one, because in my case, you can say whatever you want down there. I don't know who you are. I'm not smart enough to find you. I don't know how people find people off the internet. That seems weird to me. Like there's no direct societal or otherwise real world consequence to anything you say down there. So what incentive do you have to keep decorum? Your own personal morals and upbringing? Yeah, I don't know what those are or how you got them. So I don't trust that they're good. When there is no direct incentive to not be a jerk, people will tend to be a jerk. And that often comes in the form of abusing their power of speech. All of that to say that people hate just because they can hate. Now, the following is going to sound dumb, but I want you to humor me for just a second. Do you consider me a person? Dumb question, I know. But really, think about it. You don't know me. We've never met. You don't know anything about me. This is maybe the first time you've ever seen me before. You know, you don't know anything about my life, my friends, my personality, my beliefs, my opinions, nothing. I'm just a random person who appeared on your screen. One of many random people who has appeared and will appear on your screen, even just today. You know, within an hour, you may forget everything I've said to you, including my face. So although consciously you do understand that I am human, subconsciously, I argue that you don't. You see me as just a thing on your screen. And things on screens don't have emotions. I'm just, I'm, I'm like a product on Amazon. So sometimes I get five-star reviews, sometimes I'll get death threats, who knows? Because it doesn't really matter. You're not saying this to a person. You're saying this to a thing on a screen. So again, I'll ask, do you see me as a person? Or am I just one of those things on your screen? I think that was pretty cool, right? I don't know, like that felt very existential. I'm very proud of that paragraph. I wrote that down and I was smiling the whole time. I said it right now and it was awesome. I love, I love my job. That was fun. It also should be noted, there is a clear distinction between a person giving valid criticisms and just a hater. What are those? Um, that's a good question. Hold on, I did write it down, but I forgot. Give me a second. Yeah, a critic wants to see you improve. A hater wants to make you mad. Um, don't ask me why I couldn't remember that one sentence. I uh, kind of embarrassed, but we'll move on. Now, with that being said, you can't give haters what they want. They just want to make you mad. So 
don't respond. I will never understand somebody who tries to defend themselves in a comment section. Have you been on the internet? That almost never goes well. A lot of the times it'll just sound better in your head. It's not gonna be as articulate as you wanted it to be. And like a long time from now, maybe not even that long, like weeks or months from now, you're gonna look back and say, that was stupid. Even when it goes well, it still isn't that great because you've given that person attention and you've set a precedent now. It tells other people, hey, if you give me hate, I will give you attention, a response, something that people typically want online. I like to think about it like this. Have you ever been giving somebody the silent treatment and they just don't notice? It's the most embarrassing thing because you're just sitting in a corner with your arms crossed and you look goofy, you look stupid, man. It's the same thing. Hate and passive aggression, their prerequisite is attention. You don't give them that, it doesn't work. Don't give them attention and they're just gonna be sitting in the corner of a comment section looking goofy. Just don't, it, it works 90% of the time, just leave it alone. And if you are going to respond to somebody giving hate and or criticism, make sure that, look, if you're gonna do it, make it sincere. Nobody likes when you're being sarcastic or when you're being passive aggressive or smart with somebody else. Just leave it alone, bro. If you're gonna do that, just do that by yourself. Don't show people that you're being very affected by this and not taking it well. Just don't take it well privately and nobody else will be able to clown you about it. Just, just do, be, bad at home at the end of the day it's all about optics how does this look it won't look like anything if you don't make it anything just just don't or you know maybe you insist you can still do it i don't know go off sis do what you want you know that outfit you have on it's it's not your best i think you can dress better and i think you should how did that feel? First off, uh, you know, or at least I hope you know, that I can't actually see you. This, I'm, I'm talking to a camera and this is a, a pre-recorded video. You know how videos work. Secondly, even if I could, you're watching a YouTube video right now. What, what are you, dressed to the nines? Some of you are probably doing so on the toilet. Like, I don't care. You're gonna be wearing sweats, probably. You're not putting on your best threads for this, and that's fine. But even despite those two very obvious facts, for a second... Did you feel called out? Like, who are you to talk about my outfit? What are you talking about? Like, that, just that, that, that subconscious thought of I don't like that somebody is saying a statement like that to me. Even if, I guess, technically it's true. I mean, I'm sure this isn't your best outfit right now. But, you know, it's not nice to hear a critique like that. Look, that was just a stupid way of trying to prove a point that I think it's very easy to conflate negative feedback on a trait or skill as negative feedback on you as a person. Hey, it's okay to feel bad when you get criticized. It's not a fun thing to happen. You know, I always imagined that when I became an adult, you know, I'd realize emotions don't matter. They're not as important. They won't affect my important life decisions. I'll be able to think rationally and smart and think about housing crises and investment portfolios. No, that's not how adults work. That's that's not how life works. Adults are just big children. Because look, even at your grown age, if Cindy said your cupcakes are too dry, you're allowed to feel bad about that. Two things with that though. Never let Cindy know that and get over it in a generally timely manner. Yes, you can feel bad about it for about an hour or two, but the bake sale is tomorrow, Deborah. Put on your oven mitts and use more butter like Cindy suggested. You cannot let your hurt, irrational feelings get in the way of the point of criticism, which is improvement. Because if you just let how bad you feel after receiving criticism be the end of the process, it's the end of the process. That's all you get out of it. You've gained nothing. All that's happened is you've just been upset for a day and that's it. But you could have learned after that. But no, you decided that this is the end of that that skill. Is that all you want to get out of this? What's the most recent thing you received criticism on? Was it one of your drawings? Perhaps a video? Maybe on your general personality and demeanor? Maybe you're not that appealing as a person. I don't know. Did it hurt? Maybe. But let me ask you this. Do you care more about your ego or more about improving as a person? Mm. Did I come up with that by myself? Not really. I think I stole it from Reddit, but still. Mm. Really, that's what it all boils down to. Everybody loves compliments. Everybody loves them, okay? I get them sometimes. When I put out a video, there's always dozens of comments of people telling me I did a great job and I love it. And even if I did make mistakes and I understand that I could have made a better edit there and that joke wasn't really funny and this whole point doesn't really make sense, you'll still, a lot of you still like it and I love it. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Thank you. Keep doing that. Oh my gosh. Like, and that's not a bad thing. There's a time and place for these things. But when it comes to improvement, what's more important? Getting compliments or getting actual tips to improve?
I think we both know what the answer to that one is. Overly flattering remarks kind of convince you that you're great, but honest critiques will explain to you why you're not great and how you can be in the future. Between those two options, it's not as appealing to go with option B, but it is far more effective. So ask for advice, and when you do, avoid the sugar coat. Just let them go in. Just just tear me down. Speaking from experience, when you no holds barred, is that the phrase? Let an expert in a field tear you to shreds. Once you recover after a day or two, you are much better off. <laughs>everyone needs critics and it requires a level of humility to accept that criticism we love to applaud millionaire businessmen and artists who denied the naysayers never listened to any of the critics they went out on their own and proved everybody wrong here's the thing statistically that is not you am i going to say it's impossible no. Am I going to advise that for you? No! We love to think we're gonna win the jackpot, we're gonna break the odds, we're going to show everybody that they were wrong, but a lot of the time, there is wisdom in numbers. So if an unbiased group of people you know and trust are all giving you the same point of advice on a life decision or an artistic piece of work, they're probably on to something. Now, of course, I don't know your life or your decisions or the circumstances that are coming to mind as I'm saying all of this stuff. You have to play it by ear most of the time, but most of the time, unless you have solid reasons for believing that the majority is wrong, they're probably not. As much as you can, try to separate yourself from the piece of work or the decision that other people are critiquing. For example, you may be saying to yourself, how dare they critique my script? This play is about my sick father who died of old age heart failure syndrome disease. They don't understand everything that went into this. How dare they? Just take a second. Hold on. This is going to sound really bad, but does any of that really matter right now? If you read the same script just from a different person, would you be defending it with this same ferocity? No, because I'm sorry to say this, buddy, but the script might just suck. This isn't the Struggle Olympics. It's just, did you write a better script or not? If you didn't, hey, there's a group of people telling you how to make it better. Listen to them. If we're talking about end of the day, objective results, talents, and displays of general greatness, the background and the struggle to get here is really not as important. All that matters is what you put out. The behind the scenes and the personal attachments are secondary to the end product. As tough as it may be, and I understand it is tough, you do have to stop looking at it as my script because in reality, it's just a script, one of many. Compare it to the other ones, see where you went wrong and improve. And uh, also, mm. I'm not a therapist, so I'm not gonna say it like that. I'll say it anyway. Is your self-worth dependent on the opinions of others? Because in my experience, it is very easy to like yourself and to like your work when everybody else does, because it's like, you can point to them and just say, look, they like it, so I must like it too. If everybody likes it, I'm good, and I don't have to think about whether I like it or if I like myself, I can just depend on them and that's cool. But if and when that goes away, you have no confidence. So really, you're just chasing validation. You're not chasing improvement. You just want other people to confirm that you're good so you can feel good. But when you receive a valid criticism, it feels like everything you've built yourself on, again, that being validation, has come crumbling down, and it's no longer a critique of one work or one decision. It is a full-on teardown on you as a person and it feels bad. But they didn't say anything about your other works or you as an artist or your ability to improve. They literally just made one critique on one thing. You've got other things to show for. You're, you're fine. Just, uh, it, it's really so easy to oversimplify this because it, it's complicated in the moment, but you gotta stop it. Also, getting back to the whole thing about people are being critical versus just hating on a thing. Here's how I think it's good to tell the difference. Fix the thing, specifically fix the thing, and then gauge their reaction. A person who's being critical with the goal of helping you will be happy that they've accomplished their goal. They helped you. A person who is hating will not be happy because their goal was never to help you, it was to make you feel bad. You did the opposite. You worked on it, and now you feel good. If they're happy, it was criticism. If they're mad, it was hating. Now, this can get a little bit murky when it starts to get into the whole territory of close friends and family because a lot of the times, even if they are being helpful with criticism, that criticism is also mixed with a bunch of annoyance because familiarity breeds contempt, and I'm out of breath. But just, just feel it out. Uh, I feel obligated to note that that maybe paragraph I just said about family and, and mixing hate and love and all that, uh, I did not research that. That's just my personal 
opinion. I really don't want to give anybody bad advice, so please don't cut anybody off or something crazy like that because I said it. I'm just talking. You don't have to listen to me. Maybe don't. Just take it with a grain of salt. I don't know. I think that covers me, right? Because if somebody gets in the comment section and says, I cut off my mom because of you. Now I'm sad. I didn't tell you to do that. That being said, as the title and thumbnail suggest, I am going to try and be a man of my word and take the criticisms down below in stride. With that being said, hey Siri, That was really slow. I, I had a good pace going on there, but I guess we'll wait for her to be ready. Pick a number between 1 and 37. No? Okay, we're done with you. Uh, hey Google, pick a number between 1 and 37. Here's a random number. 36. There is no way. What? I will be responding to, apparently, 36 well-thought-out comments that are giving me honest and valuable critiques. But I'm gonna show favoritism to people like you who reached the end of the video, so if you did and you still want to write a comment, use the word cataclysmic. So I know that you got to this point. Nobody's just gonna casually use the word cataclysmic, right? 